Let's do it. Powerful stuff you're teaching. Well, I mean, listen, this is a matrix. I don't care what anyone says. You know, a lot of people like to talk about God, which I call the prime creator. A lot of people who are out there talking about God, what they think is God and what I think is God is completely different. I think they're actually might be praying to a devil. Mm. Um, I believe there's a prime creator above everything, but he doesn't interfere. But I think the person or the entity in charge of this matrix, I don't think they're benevolent at all. What do in you mean? Any, I don't think the um, deity that runs this realm is benevolent in any sense of the imagination. I believe that uh, people are actually praying to um, an entity that doesn't actually uh, encompass love and forgiveness and all that other stuff. I think it's more of um, entrapment, enslavement, mm. things of that nature. Because think about it. If you're all powerful, why would you care if people worshiped you? You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting how the Christians and Muslims seem to agree on one thing. You can be a rapist, you could be a murderer, you could commit any sort of sin, but as long as you take Jesus Christ or Allah as your Lord and Savior, it's all forgiven. Mm. Nah, karma doesn't work that way, pimp. <laughs> so, you know, what I'm thinking is, um, you know, it, it kind of seems like a Ponzi scheme. And also, you know, if they want to talk about, you know, a lot of people say I'm running a cult and stuff like that, where there's no evidence of me running a cult. I haven't impregnated any of the women in my group. So <laughs> how could I be running a cult? If I am, I'm doing a shit poor job of it. <laughs> but, you know, when it comes down to it, uh, the biggest cult in the world is Christianity, about 2.3 billion. Damn. And the second is Islam. Now, I agree with some things in Islam. I think when a society is degenerate mm -hmm. and this society is degenerate. By every stretch of the imagination, this is a degenerate society we live in. So yes, Islam would be helpful right now. When you have a degenerate society, religion is helpful. Yet when you have a society that is somewhat on the right track, then religion kind of holds them back. Mm. So it's like a balance with religion when it's too degenerate religion can be needy because I'd rather deal with the Bible thumpers and the Muslims than the LGBT. Any day of the week, I'd rather deal with these people who want to believe a woman was uh, impregnated somehow by a miracle or that a man who is illiterate wrote the Quran. Mm. You know, um, those kind of seem like fairy tales to me, but I'd rather deal with that than people who think um, a woman and a woman and a man and a man constitutes a family. Right. So. so you don't tie yourself to any specific religion? Um, I mean, if I was really to think of any philosophy, um, maybe Buddhism. Same. You know, because I believe in karma and reincarnation and stuff like that. So wh whatever my parents are or whatever religion that is, um, I've never been to temple, you know, consistently or something like that. I'm more reincarnation, karma, I believe you're supposed to be a good person. Uh, you know, try to help the people you can. You can't help everyone. Mm. And if you try to help everyone, you're going to get burned. And you're going to think of me when it happens. You ever try to help people and then all of a sudden you get burned? Yeah. So sometimes, you know, when you try to stick your nose into business where a young soul has to evolve itself and you try to push them forward, sometimes, you know, you get burned for doing it. They're not ready, right? No, they're just not ready. You're a 33 life path. You know damn well you try to help with so many people <laughs> and how many times you get burned, brother? Almost every time. Every, mm -hmm. Anytime I give a loan, I never mm -hmm. get the money back. You're able to predict a lot of things. I am, but numerology ain't real, right, Sartan? So, yeah. you know, Sartan again, people, pe you know, Sneeko or all these other guys, they can see what they want. But at the same time, when a guy like Sneeko says, oh, I don't believe in numerology, but he'll also say that the people in positions of power do believe in numerology. So what are you saying, Sneeko? You're smarter than the people ready the planet mm. or anyone else who's a critic. So there, there's these people who actually say it's real, but oh, the Bible's against it or the Quran's against it. First of all, nowhere in the Quran does it say, um, you know, numerology is haram. And I've had Muslim scholars tell me this. Mm. So that's number one. The Christians can say, oh, astrology is from the devil. Listen, if your Bible wasn't rewritten more times than back alley horror was ran through, um, you know, I, I, maybe I'll take your, you know, something at what you're saying at face value. But the fact of the matter is, I believe your Bible was rewritten many times.
mm. many times. And the reason I'm bringing up religion so much is because people are grifting religion an awful lot mm. in 2024. And that's exactly what I predicted. Because one of my things as a numerologist, I remember um, first time I went to Russia, I noticed it was 2006 and I noticed something. I noticed that all the moms and the priests were eights. Mm. And I was like, why would priests and the moms and you know rabbis mostly be eights? And then you have to understand that eight is the number of money, but it's also the number of power. And the church used to be the power structure. So a lot of people who are grifters, they like to use God. Mm. You know, uh, Pat, uh, Patrick Bet David is, you know, used to be an atheist now. And by the way, I'm not supporting atheism in any stretch of the imagination whatsoever. I believe in the prime creator. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in your gods or whatever the hell they are, demons or angels. I believe in the prime creator, but I also believe the prime creator does not interfere. Mm. He just judges you based off your karma at the end of the journey. That's it. Yeah. He's going to throw you in the deep end and see what, what are you going to do to survive? Mm. Are you going to actually uh, take someone's life, life raft away from them and, and, you know, steal and murder to get ahead? Or are you going to work hard, be a good person, mm. help out, you know, people who are loyal to you and obviously step on the next of the people who, you know, try to go after you. Everything is yin yang. Right. So. I love that. You had a really viral clip recently. You said women with a butterfly tattoo are possessed. I mean, listen, um, I do believe uh, this world is run by negative energies. Uh, in the Quran, they're called jinn. And I do believe when you drink alcohol, I do believe when you're a whore, I do believe that allows for possession. Mm. I believe these uh, jinn demons like to um, possess human bodies and feel the lust, feel sin. I, I, and one of the ways they identify with each other is they put a butterfly tattoo mm. because to a butterfly evolves from a caterpillar. So when these demons possess these humans, all of a sudden they have an urge to get a butterfly tattoo. Mm. It's like the most common tattoo in America. A yeah. butterfly tattoo. Why do all of a sudden people become whores and alcoholics and they want to get a butterfly tattoo? You know, I'm, it's not just like women. I see it on guys too. I'm like, okay, I know you've been fucking doing some shit. So <laughs> I, I, again, it's just one of those things in life when you know a lot about a lot, you can start observing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to save some people a lot of headaches. You see someone of a butterfly tattoo, and I'm not saying it's a hundred percent. So yes, you could be looking at this video and be like, I ain't Gary, nah, nah, nah. okay, you're the exception. But 99% of them, it's real. 